Hello and welcome again to Safety Short Series. Today is we are going to post 19th video of the series and today's topic is on chemical safety. Uh, I have earlier also posted on the element but today it's special for we are going to focus it on storage of hazardous chemical in bulk where we will be discussing uh, general conditions and type of storage along with layout of storage coming under chemical hazard and control measures. The large quantities of chemicals are available in storage facilities which may be a factor, you know, a factory site or an isolated storage place. Therefore, it is very important to prevent the loss of contaminant from the storage and hazardous chemical. You know, the loss or loss through fire in storage result in financial loss rather than the loss of life may relatively less but public impact is high. So there are numerous standards and code practices which are applicable to storage. Now Bureau of Indian Standard has brought out a number of safety codes for chemical and other hazardous material. The objective of storage in a factory is to smoothen the fluctuation in day-to-day -day requirements and availability. Now when we say smooth fluctuation that means what? That means that you you cannot have you know if there are no fluctuation that is there is there is no need of storage so there are basically two principal type of designs in storage facility which are kept in mind first is the economic consideration and the second is safety aspects so when we say smooth functionality that means what we earlier said that but what is that that means that we that there would not be a need of storage if, if all the chemicals are coming in time no, but it is not okay. so what we do the type of storage for which are uh, economic in these alternative designs may be different and may have different safety implication also the hazardous chemicals stored under pressurized conditions have you know may pose comparatively more hazards than the same chemical stored under atmospheric condition the chemicals will need more space and uh, when stored under atmospheric storage condition and hence it becomes very costly. So a compromise has to be made between the two aspects. Most of the hazardous chemical held in storage of flammable liquids and liquefied gases, the code specifies measures to minimize spillage. The vessels and pipe work should be of high standard. The number of connections below the liquid level should be kept to minimum preferably uh, just one uh, filling or discharge line if possible the minimum size connection should be used for draining and sampling barriers should be provided to protect the vessel against external damage measures to control spillage and fire are also available in the course now let's discuss the storage so uh, we have defined you know main uh, type of storage with reference to the fluid referred as so firstly liquid of atmospheric uh, liquid at atmospheric pressure that is atmospheric storage these fluids are referred as volatile liquids the second is liquefied gases under pressure at an atmospheric temperature that is pressurized storage these fluids are called flashing liquid gases now thirdly the liquefied gases under pressure and low temperature that is refrigerated pressure stored minimum you know storage uh, refrigerated storage such fluids are called semi refrigerated liquefied gas fourth comes under liquefied gas at atmospheric temperature and low uh, uh, atmospheric pressure and low temperature now these are fully refrigerated storages are fluids referred to as refrigerated liquefied gases fifth is gas under pressure are a fluid under gas you know uh, gas under pressure so that's that's very simple now a leak a leak of volatile liquid stored under conditions results only in slow very slow evaporation but in case of leakage of a chemical under stored condition 4 that is mentioned in the table initial flash off will take and an evaporation will be slow but faster than the first phase in brief the situation will vary depending upon the type of material stored in a leak the economics of storage 
of liquefied gases are that it is preferred to use pressure storage for small quantities now pressures of semi refrigerated storage or for you know medium large quantities and full refrigerated storage for very large quantities is kept now let's talk about layout of storage now when we talk of layout of storage the storage process and you know terminals should be suitably arranged the storage should be built on ground level and should support heavy load and located between the process and terminals the wind characteristic should be uh, you know taken into consideration which reduces the hazards of flammable liquids and vapors now the very first strategy that we are going to discuss is segregation the segregation of uh, segregation and separate uh, separation of hazardous chemical within the storage area is mainly based on three characteristics that is first is classification of hazardous chemicals stored the second is electrical area and the third is of protection measures that is fire protection measures so the classification of hazardous chemical are based on physical chemical and hazardous properties like flash point classification toxicity rating and electrical area classification that is zone 0 1 are based on fire hazard protection now let us discuss about bunts so in general bunts are provided for atmospheric storage tanks and for fully refrigerated storage tanks of liquefied gases now bunts are generally not recommended for pressure and semi refrigerated storage of liquefied gas the purpose of bunt is to retain liquid so that it can be dealt within a control manner now atmospheric storage tanks are generally provided with full bunts if there are more than one tank inside the bunt the capacity should be of the largest tank after allowing for uh, you know its displacement due to other tank now low division wall between the tank within the bunt are recommended similarly uh, sometimes you know it may be practicable to provide full bunt capacity under certain circumstances use may be made you know uh, provision may be made to separate impounding areas into which the liquid spillage may be run so the bunt should be far enough from the side of the tank to prevent the jet of liquid jumping over the corners of the bunt and should be rounded the bunt should be provided with drain not so high or to hinder the fire fighting or sometimes you know some literature the maximum height is given to be 2 meters now there should be a minimum two access point on the opposite side of the bunt to allow safe access escape in all wind direction now for pressure storage vessel currently lpg a full bunt is not recommended because after spillage a large amount of liquid will remain after the uh, you know in uh, after the initial flash off for example 60% 67% of propane will remain in liquid uh, form after the initial flash off from the pressure storage tank of propane at 16 degrees celsius theoretically now for the fully refrigerated storage tank containing liquid ammonia should be provided with full, full bunt now the separation distance the minimum recommended separation distance of the storage are given in various codes and other publication in india safety distance for pressurized toxic flammable and corrosive chemicals storage is given in this static and mobile pressure vessel that is smpv rules table and two main factors which could be determined as separation are first is the heat and the burning liquid and the second is ignition of vapor escape now to get the exact distance of storage engineering calculations are done uh, based on direct uh, you know impingement or intrusion and on heat radiations now the minimum recommended separation distance from storage tank for class of a and b flammable liquids are given in table 2 uh, and uh, in of institute of petroleum in 1985 refining safety codes the two tables we see here the table 1 is the minimum safety distance for flammable corrosive and toxic uh, you know gases uh, cases and the table 2 is the distance between the tank and building containing enough flammable material and filling sheets 
or storage buildings that is which type of uh, uh, tank roof is there that is either it is fixed or floating type or both or what is recommended when so suppose i'll just give you a very quick brief on this that is first if if you are thinking of you know a water capacity of a vessel is less uh, less is less than you know not above 2000 liters so the minimum distance between from building or the group of building or line of adjoining property is 5 meters and minimum distance between the pressure vessels is just mere 1 meter now for factors uh, you know the distance between the tank and building containing flammable material and you know uh, fill shade of or storage building whether it is fixed type or floating type the minimum distance is 50 feet or 15 meters so a minimum of 20 feet or 6 meters is there now the distance between the tank boundaries or any source of ignition uh, the minimum 50 feet or 15 meters source of ignition irrespective of should be you know given at a distance of months so the other aspects now this concludes uh, all of it so the other aspect that you need to consider you can refer these tables the other aspect that you need to consider are you know division of wall and can be used to divert the large vapor flow of areas where they can be dealt with more safely and the stream curtain are you know considered as means of maintaining separation from ignition slopes firewall are utilized to give protection against flammable and high heat radiation of fire so hope uh, we were able to give you much information on the storage of hazardous chemicals in bulk uh, discussing general consideration and types of storage along with layout of storage uh, coming under chemical hazard and control measures so like i said safety shot is a series focusing on short short safety videos thank you for all your support keep liking and sharing and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for our motivation we'll keep posting more such videos till then be connected and stay safe